What's happening everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new TID Radio TDH3. Really cool ham radio, does GMRS, FRS, 2 meters, 70 centimeter, I even got it to do 220 megahertz. It's USB-C programmable. It's also chargeable via USB-C. This thing is awesome. They actually sent me a prototype of this radio back in late November, early December. Here it is here. And now this is the official version. We are gonna take a look at it this time on Ham Radio Tube. So here's everything that comes in the box. We get the radio, obviously. There's the back of that. And see your FCC ID and all that stuff comes with a nice antenna there for uh, 144 435 megahertz comes with a charging and programming cable here USB a to USB C we get a nice hefty battery this is 2500 milliamp hour battery very beefy I assume there's a couple uh, 18650s in here but nice battery and again USB C chargeable on the battery there we're also gonna get this nice charging cradle that also uses the USB-C for charging. We're gonna get a plug. We've got an, a very handsome wrist strap here, a belt clip, and a little card here for customer support, and a destruction manual that's gonna help you get started with that. Now I've seen the price of this radio vary anywhere from about 30-ish dollars all the way up to close to $50. But TID Radio has given me a special link. If you use the link that will be located in the description below, you can have this for only $28.88 as of the time of recording. That's 10% that's off uh, the already sale price of this. So pretty darn cheap. So let's take a walk around the radio. On the left-hand side, we're going to have two PTT buttons. This top one is going to be for our A-band. And this bottom one here, notice that little green arrow, now we're transmitting on 446. So we have two different PTTs for our VFOA and our VFOB. I think that's really cool. Then we have this third uh, programmable button, which you can program in the software. If we just click it once, we get the flashlight, then we get a blinking light, and then it's off. And if we long press this, that's gonna open the squelch. Our antenna port is a BNC male with a BNC female antenna. We've got a nice touchpad here with kind of multi-function things. So for example, this blue button here is gonna be what gets us into the menu here, but we can also use it for other functions. So like this number five here, if we're listening to a repeater and we wanna see if we can hear someone on the reverse frequency, we're just gonna hit the blue button and five, and now you can see we've got that R right there listening on the repeat or the, the reverse frequency if we were listening to a repeater. That's really cool. Here we have our VFO A and B buttons here. And if I had memories programmed, this uh, bottom left button here, our VM button, would cycle between VFO and memory. It's also going to act as our back button when we're in the menu. And on the right hand side here, we can see this little flap we've got just our traditional kind of Kenwood style uh, plug for programming and speaker mics and things like that. But we don't need to use that for programming anymore because this programs with USB-C. How freaking cool is that? And speaking of the menu, we push the blue button. We could, we've got 56 different menus to cycle through. So our bandwidth, squelch, transmit power, kind of everything you need to operate the radio. You can program this totally from the keypad here very very easy to use one of the things they just updated in the new firmware this uh, menu 40 this is the squelch tail elimination i guess some people were having issues with the squelch tail so they fixed that i am on uh, the newest version 240427 i just updated it another cool thing is this breath led that they have just i kind of just touching on some new functions so what this does say the the backlight goes off and you don't know if your radio is on receiving this breath and you can set the time intervals will have these green lights up here blink depending on how often you set it so we can see now the screen went dim and i just set it for five seconds so every five seconds those green lights are going to blink up just to let you know the radio is on i think that's kind of a neat feature there Another nice thing to see in a radio of this caliber is actually the mic gain button. So we can actually adjust our mic gain to however we suit. You've got AM air band. We can go ahead and turn that on. Then we can receive AM. So let's go, I think it's 118400 here. 
and then it automatically changes to air. So if you want to listen to air traffic in your area, that's a great feature. Another cool thing that I find quite useful is just the ability to long press the up or down button and cycle through the menus really, really quick. That's something that is not in a lot of radios. So uh, they're definitely looking into making things easier for people. So I really like that. Another thing, where did it go? 200 transmit off. Well, let's turn that on. Maybe. There we are. So now let's just say 224000. Look at that. We're actually transmitting on 220 megahertz right now. Now, the power output's kind of wonky. I was getting about one and a half, then it would go down, then it would go up. Uh, didn't really matter high or low, but it is putting out power on 220, so technically we got a tri-band uh, radio here, so that's pretty neat. You also have 350 and 500 megahertz transmit. I don't know why the heck you'd ever need those, but you can. And back to zero. Now, this comes by default as either a ham or a GMRS uh, radio, but all you have to do is turn the radio off, push the PTT, and hold in the star button while turning it on, keep them held down, and then you can select whether you want it to be just a ham radio, a GMRS radio, or normal, just opens it wide open for uh, everything that it's capable of transmitting on. Now they do advertise this as a five watt radio. In my tests on two meters on low power, I got around 0.53 watts. And on high power, I got right around four watts. On 70 centimeters, the low power was about 0.37 watts. And the high power was kind of around 3.8, 3.9 watts. So this also has an incredibly wide receive range. Now, I don't know how functional this will be, but this will receive all the way down to 18 megahertz, which is kind of in the ham bands there. It's only FM, so I'm not sure what that's going to do for you. But CB just allowed FM. We can go to, I don't know what the CB frequencies are, but we can go to 027. I'm just picking numbers at random here. 27350 FM. Now, you can't transmit there, but you could listen to some CB FM traffic. Same thing with 10 meters. Let's say 28, uh, whoops. 028960, I think that's the FM calling frequency. So if 10 meter FM is open for you technicians, you, again, you can't transmit, but you could still listen. That's pretty cool. You're gonna need a, a, a different aerial than this, but uh, it does the thing. So that's pretty neat. Another really cool feature about this radio is say you have two of these radios and unfortunately I can't demonstrate because this one is a prototype and I can't, un, uh, I can't update the firmware to save my life. But if we turn this off and hold in this bottom key while turning it on, we're gonna get this wireless copy. So if someone else has another one of these radios in your group, you just push the copy button again and that'll transfer all the data that's on this to this so you all have the same frequencies in your radios. Another really cool thing that they just implemented, say you're in an area where you know people are and they're keyed up, if we long press this one button here, it's gonna scan for what frequency it is and it's also gonna, whoops, pick up the CTCSS tones or whatever tones are available. And right now it is on that frequency and you can see as I key up, this radio is now receiving. You can also choose to save that as a memory uh, or you can just reset and go back and try it again. So let's go 446000. And I find it to actually be uh, pretty darn accurate. Look at that. It's not. Uh, it's not reading wrong frequencies or anything. So that is a really cool feature right there. Another nice thing I really like about this radio, look at the size of this speaker. This thing is gigantic. It's nice and loud. I don't have problems hearing it and it actually sounds good. Take a look. This is Kate MRD testing the speaker audio of the TDH3. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Check two, check two, sibilance, sibilance. Now, as far as programming this radio, we've got a lot of different ways. One, you can program this right from the front panel, all your CTCSS, your DCS tones, your, your offsets, everything very, very easily. Save them into memory, just like that. But TID Radio has uh, their own software that you can use. You can download from, I think it's walkie-talkie-radio.com or something. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, it is only Windows based, unfortunately. I did try it out. It's a little bit clunky. Uh, it's not quite as polished as other applications like Chirp that we'll get to in a minute, uh, but it does work. If, if that's all you have, 
uh, is either programming it by the keypad or TID Radio software, it does work no problem. But if we long press this blue button, now we have Bluetooth. So we can bring our phone into the mix and open up an app called OD Master. Now we can create an account. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna hit skip login. I don't know why I get this network request failed, but we can go to Bluetooth. I'm just gonna hit refresh Bluetooth. Go ahead and turn that on. Then we're gonna select the model. This is a TID radio and I'm just gonna select TDH3 and read from the radio. And now we are reading everything that's on this radio to my phone. And now here we're presented with a channel list and a function list. So in channels here, we can select whichever channels we want. You can see these green ones apparently are already taken up. The red ones don't have any memory in there. That's fine, I'm just gonna select channel one. So I'm gonna type in 146.860 and delete that. 146.860. Two six zero. That's the offset, and then I need a DCS tone of six thirty one N, and there it is. And down here we can name that. Let's just name that Huntsville. Done. We can set our transmit power to either high or low. Make any other changes there and then we can write that directly to the radio. All over Bluetooth, all on your phone. It's fantastic. And now when we go to the VFO memories, down to memory one, we can see there is Huntsville. It's transmitting the DCS code on the correct frequency, just like that. But this also has USB-C programming, and I like Chirp, and this works with Chirp. So let's check it out. And all we have to do is plug in the USB-C cable into the TID radio and your computer. We're going to hit download from radio, choose your serial port, pick TID radio and TDH3, hit OK, and hit OK again. And now it is reading from the radio. And here's just the default that it had. So if we want to put in, you know, whatever frequencies we got, done and done, name it, who cares, whatever, or... You can just grab another file from another radio and highlight them all, copy them and bring them into this new file. And we will paste them all there. Overwrite all those memories. Done and done. I got all my GMRS and my repeaters and my FRS, MERS, NOAA, everything's in there. And we can go over to the settings tab here and here's where we can adjust some basic settings here. Like if we want channel A and B to be on uh, either name or frequency. We can change it here. Done and done. Here's our power on message. So maybe I want it to say K at MRD. And then we can put in ham radio and tube down here like that. Here we have our AB channels. So we can set like our default uh, A and B channels. So we'll set that for 14652. And our B channel frequency... 446, whatever whatever you want to do with all this stuff, change your transmit power, all that stuff. So whatever FM, uh, FM radio channels you want to listen to, the only thing I can get here is 106.9, so we'll put that in. Your DTMF stuff, just like that. You can, uh, again, upload that to the radio, and all those will be saved. And as we can see, when we turn the radio on, here we have that program message there. And we're in memory mode here. We can see the names of the channels and the frequencies are all programmed in just like that. And even the FRS and GMRS frequencies also work as well. But now for the final test. Is this a clean radio? When I tested the prototype, it was. So let's see if this version is as well. We've got a 40 dB attenuator in line with my Tiny SA Ultra. And let's see what happens as we key up. I'm on high power. We've got some harmonics, but they're all very low and they're going away. So there we are. That appears to be a darn clean radio. That second harmonic is just below our blue line there for measurement. And that's where we want it to be. 
So this is a clean radio, and this can now get the KMRD seal of approval. So that's a quick look at this really cool tiny radio from TID Radio, the TDH3. If you're interested in picking one up, there will be links in the description that will help you save money. My name is Mike KMRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube 73.